is sort of a made up term, a combination of a couple of different words. So perma, just meaning permanent uh, or made that way, and then tease uh, refers to the technique that we've all used before on our bio here, uh, where it's the process of teasing or backcombing the root to provide some lift and body and style. Uh, to the hair. So those two terms together. Now there are a couple of types of permatease. The first type is the process of crimping the fibers on one end, usually the root end that's going to be sewn into the wefts. This allows the, the fibers to take on a little bit more body and shape without weighing the hair down with extra fibers. So for an example, here's a long style here. So if you've ever if you've ever inspected the root of a long style, sometimes you don't see those little springy hairs that we would traditionally think of as permatees, but the actual fiber itself, the long fiber at the root end is crimped. Remember those old crimping irons that we had back in the 80s? It's commonly used in longer wigs as well as straight and sleek styles. It's meant to obscure the wefting, add a little bit of shape and volume without adding any extra fiber. The second kind of permatease is what we commonly think of. When I say the word permatease, you think of this type of permatease. And that refers to the little springy hairs. These are actually um, fibers that are very, very short, very wiry and thick. They're sewn right onto the weft. And then as a part of finishing the wig out, they'll actually comb it. Uh, to give it the lift that you see that you commonly refer to as permatease. So when I'm feeling around in my cap and I'm reporting to you on permatease, a lot of times what I'm looking for is that bottom tease. Now I am wearing Noriko Dolce in the color Sugar Cane R and I did that for a reason because Dolce is very heavy handed on the permatease as is a lot of those Noriko styles. This is the bottom tease, this is the permatease, this is the thick stuff. So when I'm feeling around and I'm explaining this is very heavy on the permatease, I'm feeling those little springy hairs that are at the root of these fibers. They're extra hairs. So like I said, they're sewn into the weft and then as a part of the finishing process, they comb them up and that's what you, that's what you see when you bring a brand new wig, especially a Noriko wig out of the box and you see those springy little hairs in there. That's what, uh, that's what's commonly referred to as permatease. Those springy little short hairs at the base of the cap, um, they're actually sewn into the wax, and the purpose is to obscure the cap, provide shape, lift, and volume to the style. It helps when you know why permatease is used. So permatease is used to uh, give the wig shape, to cover up uh, any of the cap or wefting, and um, it's also meant to keep the style of the wig. For instance, this Dolce here would look completely different if it didn't have permatease in it. You'd probably be able to see the wig cap. It would fall lank and loose against my head. It would lose its shape. It just wouldn't be attractive. In fact, this is one of the ways that you can tell when your permatease wig has reached the end of its useful life. The fibers start to go and that's an obvious sign, but the other thing is that it's losing its shape. You can deal with it and actually use it to your advantage. You can use it to create lift, you can sculpt your style and, and, and it gives you a lot of versatility. I think that most of us would agree that they like the shape of a style. Um, and you may or may know, not know that the permatease is responsible for the shape of that style, but you just don't want to look into the wig and see that nasty look or appearance of permatease, right? I have a few ways of disguising that permatease every time I wear a permatease wig. The first way is that I just really get in there and I spring those fibers from the part. So I call it springing the part. That's just my own made up term. But um, if you put the wide tooth comb at the base of the cap and just gently pull up, what you're doing is you're releasing the hair from those teased fibers, okay? So that within itself is going to create a little more natural look on a permateased wig. Um, the other thing that you can do is dirty up the part, all right? And what I mean by that is mess it up. So just kind of messing up the part a little bit. And this Dolce is old. 
I've worn this now for over a year, um, not every day of course, but um, the permatease is hanging in there pretty good, but it, the part was already previously messed up there. So you can see where by dirtying that part, somebody would be hard pressed to see or be able to spot the permatease on that, unless you're an experienced wig wearer. Another way that you can disguise permatease is by selecting a, a dark rooted color or a darker rooted color, such as the sugarcane R here has a medium brown root and it really does very nicely of obscuring the permatease. But the truth of the matter is, permatease is a necessary thing. You should welcome it, you should make friends with it. If you are opposed to it, um, I would uh, look towards uh, options that have more monofilament in them, a hand tied, a monofilament top and lace, a very minimally machine made wig to, uh, to avoid the permatease.